Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So it is mid-January here in Northwest Iowa and I have been really busy putting together my garden plan for the 2022 growing season. I think I pretty much have the entire layout done. Now I just need to go through and figure out my exact plant spacing so that I know how many plants I have room for and then how many seeds of each plant to start. Um, but that will be a whole separate video. So in this video, I just wanna share with you guys all of the seed varieties that I am growing this year. And there are a lot. So last year was my first official year growing cut flowers and I learned a lot about what varieties I really like. So I have nixed quite a few for this year. I'm expanding some of my varieties and so I am really excited for this year's growing season. Now, if you're not familiar with my garden, I have an urban garden downtown next door to my photography studio in my small town and I grow on about 2,000 square foot of space. So I think for the order of this video, I'm gonna start with all of my focal flowers with the exception of dahlias. I will do a separate video with my dahlia tubers. Then I will go into the filler and accent flowers and then I will show you the foliage that I am growing, which are just a few. Um, so since I have so many, let's just get right into it. So the first flower I'm gonna share with you guys today are my snapdragons. Snapdragons were one of my favorite flowers that I grew last year. They're also one of the earlier flowers I have in my garden. And they bloomed really strong in the spring and early summer. And then they bloomed all the way till the end of the season. So they were really great performers the entire year long. Um, I should also mention before I get into this, this is how I store my seeds. This is from Amazon. It's just a CD holder case. Um, and then it has five different compartments in it. So really easy to store my seeds and I can easily sort them into different categories. But anyway, let me show you my snapdragons first. So last year, the two varieties of snapdragons that I found had the best stems for me were the Potomac and the Costa series. So this year for the Costa series, I'm growing a few varieties and I'll put pictures up on the screen of these. I'm growing the Costa Apricot, which I grew last year and it was so pretty. I'm growing the Costa Silver and then the Costa Mix from Johnny's. Now, most of my seeds, I should also mention, I get from Johnny's. I do have a few other various companies where I get seeds such as um, Select Seeds and Florette. And so I will link those websites all down below. Um, so then a few random varieties of Snapdragons that I have. The Snowflake, which I grew last year and it was really nice. Um, I'm gonna try the Snapdragon Black Prince this year. It looks like a really deep purple crimson color. I just thought that would be pretty. And then the Snapdragon Night and Day, and this is from Botanical Interest. I thought that was really interesting too. Now for the Potomac series, this is what I'm growing the most of. I have the Potomac Ivory. Potomac Yellow, the Cherry Rose, Lavender. Lavender was one of my favorites last year. I have the Potomac Royal, which was also one of my favorites last year. I have the Potomac Orange, the, early, the Potomac Early Sunrise Mix, and then Johnny's Potomac Custom Mix. So I have a lot of that series. These get really tall. These can get up to 60 inches tall, so really long stem length on those. Um, now I have the Johnny's Rocket Mix that I'm growing. And then I have quite a few colors of the Madame Butterflies. Now the Madame Butterfly Snapdragons have a double petal as opposed to the other ones, and so I just like to mix these in for texture. I found that the stems were not as sturdy as say the Potomacs and the Costas, but these still worked just fine for bouquets. So I have the Madame Butterfly Peaches and Cream, the Dark Red, Pink, Bronze, Yellow, and Ivory. So those are all of my Snapdragons. I don't even know how many are there, plenty. So now I wanna go through the zinnias with you. And zinnias were another huge bloomer for me next year and one of the focal flowers in my market bouquets. These bloomed all the way until fall. 
and I just love them. They also grow really, really good in our area. So most of what I am growing this year for my zinnias are the Benneries Giant Series. I figured out um, last year that these worked best for me because of the bloom size and how well they bloomed. I tried a few other varieties such as the Oklahomas and I just did not have as good a luck with those. So I'm going strong on the Benneries this year. So I have quite a few packets of the Benneries Giant Mix, which I may not use all of them. They can last till next year. Then I have the Benneries Giant Lime, Lilac, Deep Red, Purple, Coral, White, which I don't think I'll plant a ton of the white, but um, maybe just a few. The Bright Pink, Orange, golden yellow which was my favorite last year and then wine which was my other favorite and when i'm planting my zinnias this year i'm going to do a couple different succession plantings and i'm going to plant those based on color so like the pinks and the whites those are what i'm going to start with in the spring but i'm not going to want those in the fall and so in the fall i will focus more on like the wines and the the golden yellow and the oranges so I'm gonna taper my zinnias through the season based on color that way. Now the other zinnias I'm growing are the Queen Lime series. And if you are familiar with these, you know they are absolutely beautiful. The shading on these is so different. Um, so I'm growing a lot of these also this year. I'm growing the Queen Lime Blush, the Queen Lime Red, which is my favorite because some of the flowers end up being a mauve color. I'm doing the Queen Lime Orange, which can you see that? Those are so pretty. These are from Baker Creek. And then there's a new color. I think it's a queen line peach. I have those on order. They're not here yet, but I'm really excited about all of these varieties for this year. So I have four more zinnias that I'll be planting in there, the cactus style of zinnia. And I recently ordered them online from a company called Select Seeds. I grew the pink variety last year, which is called Senorita, and I had really good luck with it. So I'm gonna try the other three colors too this year. And I think what I'm gonna do for these is I'm gonna have these as my last succession planting. So these go into my fall flower rotation. That's when I had the pink ones last year and I really liked the texture of them um, with some of my end of season flowers like dahlias and celosia. So that's kind of the plan for those four varieties. Okay, so the next focal flower that I'm growing in my garden are dahlias, which I mentioned I will do a whole separate video on all the dahlia tubers that I'm starting, but I am starting some from seed again this year. I have a packet of dahlia seeds from Florette that came with the Growing Dahlias book, or Discovering Dahlias, I guess it is. Um, I grew some of these last year and got some really nice surprises, so I'm doing that again this year. I'll probably be starting these relatively soon, actually, so watch for a video on how I do that. And then sunflowers. I am growing a lot of sunflowers, um, definitely more than I grew last year. And sunflowers I'll be succession planting, so I will be doing plantings of these every two weeks. Some of the varieties that I'm starting first in the season are the Pro Cut White Light and the Pro Cut Gold Light, um, just because I think they have that early summer look with the colorings. Then I'm going to go into the Pro Cut Brilliance, the Pro Cut Orange, which is a classic one, and the Pro Cut Horizon. Now, from what I understand with the Pro Cut Horizon, um, the bloom will face upwards a little bit more. So I'm excited to see how that one actually blooms. And then of course I have to grow the Pro Cut Red because that one is awesome for fall. And then I'm gonna grow some, not as many this year, of the Pro Cut Plum. I really love the Pro Cut Plum mixed in bouquets in the summer, but for some reason I found that that one did not have as good a vase life as the other sunflowers. And then a few random kinds that I just thought were really fun looking. Um, there's the Double Dandy, the Apricot Daisy, and the Starburst Panache. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that. Um, and I should also mention, I get all of my sunflower seeds from Sunflower Selections. They have 
really good prices and they have a huge variety, the most I have ever seen. Um, last year I did get some from Johnny's, but now I'm ordering most of mine from Sunflower Selection. So make sure to check them out. They have so many different um, unique kinds of sunflowers. All right, let me sort out the next ones I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I have the rest of my seeds all sorted. Now this starts some of my accent flowers and fillers, and then I will go over the foliages that I'm growing at the end. So I'm just gonna jump right into the varieties here. The first one is Bachelor Buttons. I am not a huge fan of Bachelor Buttons just because they're so hard to harvest, but Bachelor Buttons bloom really early, and I found last year that I needed more flowers in the spring and bachelor buttons was a good one for that because they'll bloom so early they're hardy annual and so um, they actually self seed in my garden and come up every year so i'm probably going to grow these in a designated spot just for the early flower factor um the other early flower that i want to try is larkspur i've never grown larkspur before um, so i'm gonna try a couple different colors i'm doing the qis white and the misty lavender I do think that if I get some good blooms off the Larkspur, I may save this for my dried flowers. Okay, so Rudbeckia. This was a great one for me last year. I grew the Sahara Rudbeckia last year and really loved it in my bouquets. So I'm growing that one again this year. I'm also trying the Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia and the Prairie Sun Rudbeckia. And then I, again, I have a couple packets of the Hera, Sahara. So those are gonna be really great in the garden. I'm also growing a few varieties of marigolds this year. Um, marigold was one that I tested out last year and I ended up really liking it later in the season. Um, now these marigolds are taller varieties. They're not the little short varieties like you see at the garden center that you put in your pots. These are large, um, tall varieties. These actually get up to 40 inches tall. So I have the giant orange, the Nocento Lime Green, which is the one I grew last year, the White Swan, and then the Kilimanjaro White. So I'm probably just gonna have a few plants of each of those in a designated spot and see how I like those this year. All right, I'm trying one variety of amaranth. I did not have good luck with amaranth last year, but I wanna try it again. So I'm gonna do the Red Spike Amaranth. I'm also going to try Dara one more time because I love the colors of it. Um, I just think I didn't plant it in the right place last year. So I'm gonna give that a go again this year. Then asters, I did grow a couple varieties of asters last year and I really liked them. And so I have, I think five colors I'm gonna try this year. I have the Lady Coral Lavender, the Tower Violet, the Tower Yellow, the Lady Coral Chamois from Florette. This is the one I grew last year, loved it. And then from Baker Creek, I got the Mats Matsumoto Red Striped. I just thought it was really cool looking. So I'm gonna try that one out this year too. Okay, two varieties that I did not grow in my garden last year that I really wanna try for this year, Fever Few. So I have the Magic Single Fever Few. And then Adjuratum, I ordered the Timeless Mix from Johnny's. I really love the look of these for a filler. And so I'm gonna give these a go as well. And then the rest of these varieties were ones that I grew last year. I just have more colors of them. So Celosia, I loved Celosia in my bouquets in summer and fall last year. So I'm planting a lot of Celosia this year. I'm doing the Ruby Parfait, which I grew last year. Um, I have the Flamingo Feather, the Pompous Plume Mix, which was one of my favorites last year. I have the Selway Red, the Selway Terracotta, the Selway White, I have two packets of those. And then the Chief Mix, which I have not grown this kind of Celosia. It has more of the ball um, tops. So I wanted to try that out this year too. So lots of Celosia. Okay, Gomfrina. I loved the look of Gomfrina. 
but I planted way too much. You plant one seedling of gomfrina and it mounds up into this huge plant. So I quickly realized that I do not need very many plants for the amount of gomfrina that I actually use. I also realized that it dried really well. So I'm not only gonna be using it as an accent flower in some of my bouquets, but I'm going to be saving these for dried projects in the winter. So I have the raspberry cream, that's a new one to me. Um, the Audrey White I grew last year, it was my favorite. Then last year I grew the QIS Purple and the QIS Orange, those were good. Then I ordered the QIS Carmine for this year to try that out also. Okay, so next is Cosmos. Last year I grew the Afternoon White Cosmos right along my fence outside and they bloomed so heavy from summer into fall. They were a perfect accent flower. Um, Cosmos stems are a little bit floppy and so I found that I needed to tuck them into the center of my bouquet, but they were awesome. So I'm growing the Afternoon White again this year. I'm also gonna try the Double Click Snow Puff, which is a um, more fuller, more double Cosmos. Um, the Double Click Cranberry, and the Fizzy Rose Picote. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right either, but that was another cool one from Baker Creek. Okay, two of my favorites are left, Status and Yarrow. So I'm gonna start with Status first. I loved the look of Status last year. I just grew the white, um, the Status Seeker white. That's what I grew. I love the look of it in my bouquets, but just like Gomfrina, I found that it dried awesome. So I'm gonna grow the Seeker White this year. Then I ordered the Johnny's Status Formula Mix, which is a mix of, I think, five or six different flowers. And then I ordered the Apricot Beauty, which is kind of peachy colors. I think that's gonna be so pretty. Peach is one of my favorite colors, and so if I find um, any flower that I can grow from seed that's in the peach color family. I'm all over that. Okay, yarrow. I'm growing quite a bit of yarrow this year. Yarrow is also a perennial in our area, which is a total bonus. And so I have one specific area of a bed out in my garden that I'm just devoting to perennial yarrow. I already have quite a bit out there that I bought at the end of the season last year as plants at one of our local garden centers. So I just have a few of each kind. Um, but I'm gonna be starting multiple varieties from seed this year to fill in that entire area. So I have the Flower Burst Red Shades. I have the Favorite Berries, Summer Pastels, the Polish Pastels Mix, and the Common Yarrow, which is a really pretty ivory color. Okay, so that does it for my filler and my accent flowers, but let me just share with you the different foliages that I am growing this year. Last year, I didn't really grow foliage. I kind of dropped the ball on that. And I realized that I needed um, foliage to really make my bouquets fuller. I ended up going out and foraging in the early summer um, some Queen Anne's Lace and another white wildflower that grew in our area. Um, I did have a little bit of basil in the garden that I was growing to eat that I ended up letting it go to flower, so I used that. Um, I also bought some random celosia at a garden center that never grew celosia blooms, but it grew really tall and the foliage on it was all like a deep purple reddish color. So I'm gonna try and find that again this year and then I'll use that. Um, I also went and picked some alfalfa last year, which was a really nice filler and goldenrod. That grows heavily in our area, so I use that. But as far as growing foliage in the garden, I need to make sure that I have some for every time of year this year. Um, so I'm gonna be growing Cress, which I really love the look of. Um, it's kind of a light green um, with tiny little buds on it. This I'm going to succession plant a few different times. Then I'm gonna try the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus, which I have seen works really, really well, and I've also seen that you do not need very much of it. So I'm probably gonna maybe have two or three plants of it at max, um, cause I've been told they get really large. So, and I'm just also testing that out. Um, and then the other filler that 
or foliage that I am growing really heavily is basil. Now, last year I grew um, the dark opal basil, and that is what I used in bouquets, and I absolutely loved it. So I have a couple packets of that this year. I'm definitely growing that again. Then I'm gonna grow the lemon basil and the cinnamon basil. And then this was a free packet from Baker Creek. Um, they always send you a fun free packet of seeds when you order from them. So this is called Blue Spice, and I don't know anything about this one, but I might as well plant it. So this year I will have a whole area in the garden dedicated to foliage so that I have enough of that for hopefully the whole season to fill in for my bouquets. Okay, so that does it for my entire seed haul for 2022, um, minus my Lysianthus. Now, I already have my Lysianthus seed started, and I went over the varieties of all of those in that video, so make sure to check that out. I think I started 10 varieties this year, and they're sprouting already, which is really exciting. So when I start some more of these seeds, I'll give you guys an update on my Lysianthus. Um, but I am so excited to get started for the year. So probably the next thing I will be sowing is my dahlia seeds. And then in February, I'm gonna be starting my snapdragon seeds. And then a lot of the others will be started in March and April. And before I know it, I'm gonna be out in the garden planting. So it's gonna be a really fun spring. I'm really excited. So um, stay tuned for all of my seed starting videos. I'm also going to be sharing my entire garden plan and layout very soon when I have that done. Um, so watch for all that too. So we'll see you soon.